Okay, so <laughs> I'm running into a bug where uh, space apparently disappeared. So there's that. It actually looks like I'm falling in the middle of a snowstorm. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna dock and I'm going to reload this, see if we can get rid of the bug. And so I'll be right back. Nice clean dock, Captain. Okay, I reloaded the game and now it works. <laughs> So the reason we're at the den is because there's actually some evidence over here. Uh, I found this when I wasn't recording, so I decided to leave it here. Um, but let's pick this up. Uh, Crete offer from Neva. Uh, all right, this one's up for grabs. You got plenty of supplies left at the UC outpost on Crete. The last raiding party we sent was interrupted by spacers, or maybe even competition from some independents. First ship that brings back a hold full of junk from that place gets a 20% cut. Anyone that rats this out or tries to strip the place on their own is going to get keel hauled outside the key. Uh, okay. Okay, and now we're at Euphorica because there was also this that I didn't pick up. Uh, Ayumi's offer. Can't you see busy as tell? What do you want? I've decided to accept your offer. Let's make sure this is absolutely clear. I don't want any screw-ups. I'll provide the shipment IDs, the equipment description and schematics, and in return, in return, I disable the freighter, transfer the goods, and then transport it the rest of the way for final sale. You got it. <laughs> Too bad your friends back at the key don't know you're cutting them out of the deal. I wonder what they'd say if they found out. Probably the same thing your boss in the big shiny tower would say if he knew you were funneling electrical components, right? Well, we don't have to worry about that because neither of them will ever find out, right? That's right, Tuts. Let's just enjoy the credits and keep our big mouths shut, hmm? After all, it's just good business. Okay. Howdy. Yeah, so I'm sure there's going to be some more evidence that I missed, but these are the ones I found off screen. Uh, I don't really care to search up the rest of it, so we're just going to turn these in. So let's go to... The Vigilance. Sagan. Oh, they moved. They're a lot closer to the key now. Let's go. Holy shit, they have a fleet. They're mounting an assault, aren't they? <laughs> yes, what? Because I remember them being near Earth or somewhere like that. All right, let's talk. This ship is starting to feel like home. Mole, how's the pirating business? Uh, the classified star station you mentioned, was it SY920? Yeah, it was. And you can probably guess what project it was for. Mind if I ask some questions about SY920? Yeah, I thought you might. I heard the fleet sent you up there for some more pirate work. Even more impressive, you managed to do it without taking any lives. Maybe I misjudged you. That's more than I can say for myself, given the history of Project Archangel. Did I take any lives? I think I just ran for it. <laughs> uh, how did you get involved in the project? I was one of four pilots recruited for the program. My codename was Azrael. Oh. At the time, I embraced the name. The Angel of Death hunting Crimson Fleet pirates in a prototype ship. But even for an angel, pride always comes before the fall. What was Project Archangel about? We were testing prototype fighter ships, experimental engines, weaponry, the works. The four of us were the best of the best. Emphasis on the were. There must be a reason you're no longer on the project. The official word as I was transferred back to Sistef because the need was great. The reality is I was kicked off the unit. I was so bored on that station, I spent all my time in the barracks drinking cases of smuggled booze. 
when the time came for my test flight, I was so <laughs> wasted, one of the others had to cover for me. The engine caught fire right after takeoff. Pilot, crew, gone in a flash. Huh, didn't know that. I'm gonna say this because, um, seems the most interesting choice. I found proof of fraud and system and systemic cuts to safety and security. It wasn't your fault. Is that right? I guess that lets me off the hook with the jailers, but not with the judge upstairs. I appreciate what you're trying to do, though. Just give me some time to process it. Sis Def Marines are the best of the best. Okay, let's go. Come on, Sarah. The fleet killed the buddy of This is more than a job. There is one thing I want to check though. You can't do? Yeah, you can't. Hmm. Someone on SSNM is saying it's part of this last resort. The vigilance Yo, is a state of the art warship. Anyone that gets on the wrong end of her guns is gonna have a bad time. This guy's really good at balancing. <laughs> okay. Hello. Ah, oh, damn it! I was gonna talk to her with him in the background. <laughs> okay. Anything talk. new to report? I have evidence for you. Well done. Let's see what you found. Holy crap, I have a lot. It's been a while, hasn't it? Honestly, including the two that we picked up, I thought we only had like three. <laughs> this evidence about Juan day you should put her away for a long time. Finally. We've been tracking the Jade Swan for almost a year, but Captain Dayu somehow remained one step ahead. Every time we've scanned that ship, it's come up empty. Well, she's not going to skate away this time. Nice work. Anything else? I'll be here if you have any more questions. Wait. I wasn't sure if I got XP for that, but... Uh, because I wasn't paying attention, but... I'm just gonna drink some boba alien, alien tea. For some bonus XP. And... wait. <laughs> I'm gonna check my settings, too. Because sometimes I, uh, increase the vendor credits when I'm selling stuff, because I don't want to go all over the place. Yeah, everything's normal. Hey. Remember to turn in any evidence fragments you find. I have evidence Good. for you. The more you find, the stronger our case. I've got some solid dirt on Estelle Vincent. Perfect. Taking her out of the running is going to seriously damage the Crimson Fleet's hold on Neon. Even better, that's one less fleet captain and one less ship to worry about. Find anything else? Uh, grab this from a uh, Jenardine executive's office. Pretty damning stuff. Benjamin Bayou, pride of the Free Star Collective. The authorities there have been trying to nail him for <gasps> a long time. Please put Bayou in jail. Bringing us proof that he's been manipulating Jenardine from the shadows is pretty tasty stuff. The FC will pay dearly for this. Good job. Any other fragments? It actually sounds like they're going to punish the Free Star Collective for the actions of this one person. So. That may be disappointing. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm willing to bet this will put uh, Yumi Kum Komiko from Genodyne in deep trouble. Perfect. Komiko's wanted for corporate violations in UC territory, but having concrete evidence means we extradite her and nail her to the wall. I'm sure we can arrange a prisoner trade with the Free Star Collective, make it beneficial for both interested parties. That it? Nope. Apparently I have a lot more. I completely forgot about this stuff. Uh, here's everything I have on Shinya Voss. So Voss engineered a way to directly interface with the key's mainframe? I knew he was a math genius, but didn't realize he was so tech-savvy. Well, we'll share this information with Galbank. Hopefully it'll help them shore up the security on their cryptocurrency. Have any more? Uh, I have some information about the murder of Madeleine LaRue. We were aware that Miss LaRue was involved with Fergus Wickham. When her body was recovered, Sis Def assumed he was the culprit. Sounds like we had it wrong. 
Should have pinned the murder on this Clay Dietrich perp. Well, we'll have to clear that up. Nice find. That it? Looks like Neva isn't finished with that base on Crete. I have to hand it to Neva Mora. Ladies thorough. That facility on Crete still holds a good bit of valuable resources and equipment. All right. Can't do much with this one except pass it over to the military. Hopefully they stop denying the base's existence and do something about it. Have any more? That's all I have all for right. now. Keep up the good work. That's it. We'll be here if you need us. It's good to have you back. What can I do for you? Yeah, let's talk to her again to get some of her backstory. You feel like telling me how your time in the well relates to your past experience with the Crimson Fleet? Yeah. I figured it was only a matter of time before this came up. The reason I didn't bring up the Crimson Fleet is... Well... I was one of them. It's something I'm not exactly proud of. So we share a common ground. <laughs> common ground, but not a common beginning. I was recruited out of New Atlantis by Neva Mora. She said I was making a name for myself, and it caught the fleet's attention. I was thrilled. It was a chance at bigger and better scores and gave me a ticket off world. Why the heck would I say no? Why did Neva choose you? I raised hell on New Atlantis until someone stood up and took notice. And just like Adler Kemp stuck his neck out and vouched for you, someone else in the fleet did the same thing for me. In fact, it was my idea to send you to Sidonia for your first, well, I suppose you call it a mission. Let me guess, Neva Dango credits in your face. Of course she did. How else would you get an aspiring criminal to blindly follow you into a life of interstellar crime? They took me in. Delgado ran me through the paces on Suvorov, and before I knew it, I was part of the team. Now I was making some serious money. That apartment I boasted about in New Atlantis became a joke. I even made enough to buy my own ship. What happened when Delgado brought you, brought you down to Suvorov? What do you think? It's a giant ice ball. I froze my behind off. We spent a while exploring the surface near the lock while Delgado laid out his spiel about honor among thieves and all that nonsense. Never got a look inside the facility like you did. I'm not exactly seeing the moral of the story here. The moral here is obvious. I think the fact that I'm wearing this UC SysDef uniform says it all. That you're a bloody traitor. Everything changed thanks to Commander Akande. The man basically saved my life. I owe him everything. Hearing that makes me feel better about placing my life in his hands. If I've learned one thing about the commander, it's that he cares deeply about everyone under his command. Look, um... I've already said too much. I promised Commander Akande I wouldn't talk to anyone about this. He's like right beside All you. All you need to take away is that I've literally walked a mile in your shoes, and I appreciate the risks that you're taking. Carry through with this mission. I promise you I'll be there every step of the way. Can you tell me how Commander Akande saved your life? I suppose. Though the Commander won't be thrilled that I told you, so keep it to yourself. Again, he's literally so, right there. <laughs> when I was running with the Crimson Fleet, I put together a hell of a crew. Six of the toughest pirates I could find. Uh, why would Commander Ikande mind if I knew about your past? On the record, it's against regulations. My personnel profile is private, and you need the proper authorization to access the file. Off the record, Commander Akande isn't exactly popular at MAST for the way he runs his operation, so he likes to keep these things quiet. The fact that an ex-pirate is second in command to Sis Def's pride and joy wouldn't inspire waves of confidence from his superiors. Uh, solid crew, solid ship. You say that, but most of those pirates acted like greedy children. Spent more time breaking up share disputes than I care to remember. My first mate was Arya Fikes, the toughest of the bunch. The only problem was that she had a hell of a temper. The smallest things could just 
set her off, and believe me, she took a while to cool down. Why did you select Aria as your first mate? Honestly, she was so overbearing she kind of fell into the role on her own. I didn't even make it official for months. Despite her temper, she always had my back and helped me keep the rest of the crew in line. Of course, it also helped that she was the best pilot in the fleet. She flew rings around what Sizdef was throwing at us back then. Sounds risky to make someone like that your first mate. Well, the positives outweighed the negatives. At first. Anyway, there was this one particular incident where we had a hot tip on a freighter supposedly running heavy with war. The second we dropped out of grav space, we knew it was a trap. We'd been set up, and the UC was waiting for us. Somehow we managed to take out all of their attack ships. I grabbed Arya and we boarded the freighter. Where does such a terrible tip originate? Well, it showed up on Shinya Voss's mission board, which means it could have come from anywhere. I don't know what he's like now, but back then, all of his missions were pretty solid leads with good pay. Boarding with only two of you was pretty brave. It wasn't brave. It was arrogant. We fought our way to the bridge and the crew surrendered. That's when the vigilance arrived. I watched it vaporize my ship and crew in seconds. Commander Akande radioed over for us to give up, turn ourselves in. Arya went wild. Said she'd start executing crew if they didn't let us leave. The commander tried to talk some sense into her, but she was too far gone. I knew right then she'd rather die than surrender. Why didn't you side up with Aria? I mean, I wouldn't pirate, either. <laughs> I have my limits. I never shoot someone that was unarmed and couldn't fight back. As long as they surrendered and gave up the goods, there was no need for them to die. Were there any other options? None at all. We were marooned on that freighter. No ship, no escape shuttles, and no chance of rescue. That must have put you in a terrible position. You can't even imagine. Commander Akande promised to be lenient if we let the crew go. When we didn't reply, he sent over a ship to board us. I saw Arya put her gun to one of the hostages' heads and saw that look in her eye. I could actually see her squeezing the trigger. Next thing I knew, a shot rang out. I'll never forget that look on Arya's face as she fell to the ground with the wound in her chest. Looked down at the gun in my hand like it belonged to someone else. I... I still don't know why I did it. Was she, though? <laughs> uh, you did what you had to do. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> I hope to God we're both right. Long story short, I spent a year in jail, then Keepway recruited me. <laughs> I guess he saw something in me. A desire to turn my life around. I busted my ass to get where I am today. First mate of the vigilance. Ironic I'd end up in Arya's position, don't you think? Except you're alive and Aria did isn't. She made her choice. And even though what I did back then still haunts me, I, I have to move forward with my life. Had I continued down the road I was traveling back then, we wouldn't be speaking right now. I owe everything to Commander Akande for giving me a second chance. Let me know if you need anything else. What can I do for Is you? Is that all? Yeah. Let me know if... There was something I else I want to check out as well. Uh, ooh. Further increases range and accuracy of combat tech weapons. Uh, commander office, commander's office terminal. Let's read this. 
Holy crap. Yeah, I'm just going to cycle through these, so you can pause the screen if you really want to read it. Uh, some of them we've read already, but we pretty much know most of this stuff already. Delgado. Okay, personal documents. Resolve and purpose. There are years where nothing happens, and years that can define a life. I was 16 when I first took the skies, 17 when it all came crashing down. It began with a ship. Earlier that year, my father had salvaged a wreck from the war, a B-class Deimos fighter from an abandoned star yard. It was old, outdated, and to put it bluntly, a piece of junk. The controls were shaky, the plating was rusted, and the engine coughed like it had a bad lung. But none of that mattered to me. I was hooked from the very first grav jump. You see, up until that point, I had often struggled to focus. Nothing I did had any long-term appeal. That all changed the moment I took the Deimos Junker out to the space lanes. For the first time in my life, I could see a life for me beyond the present. This ship, for all its loose wires, dents, and pockmarks, gave me purpose. Something I could devote my life to. Three months later, I was an escort from my father's freighter. Ten months later, we were attacked by the Crimson Fleet. Most days, I think about my father, the kind, gentle man who raised me. I think about how much poorer this galaxy is without his laughter soaring through its membrane. And other times, my thoughts turn to his son, the boy with the star-bright eyes and the future he lost. When I'm confronted by this boy, my resolve begins to wane. I want him to forgive me for the man that I've become, one consumed by hate and vengeance. I stand wordless as he tugs at the corners of my jacket, tears flowing down his cheek, begging me to let my anger go. And in that moment, every part of me wants to embrace him and tell him exactly what he wants to hear. I want to tell him I will drop this accursed chase and give his future the chance it deserves. But instead, I turn away. I leave him crying alone in the void of space. But what he does not realize is that I'm doing this for him. I fight the Crimson Fleet for all the fathers and the futures lost to a world that never should have been. And when I think of them, my resolve returns, and I have purpose once more. Okay, the Crimson Fleet threat. It is no secret that we've had trouble explaining to the officials at mass the urgency of the Crimson Fleet menace. Despite the fact that they are a disorganized band of pirates, they must be treated as a criminal organization that poses a threat to the safety of the cell systems. Unfortunately, without intel on the inner workings of the Crimson Fleet, much of this is speculation. We need someone on the inside to help fill in the blanks. This is why I've requested the records of every prisoner detained by the United Colony. Surely there is a candidate among them who will suit our needs. Okay. State of Vigilance. Uh, after speaking with Commander Natara, Lieutenant Toff has assured me that Project Savalin has been fully tested by the engineers at SY920 and approved by MAST. If everything goes according to plan, we will begin implementation immediately. When the time comes, this upgrade will be essential for what we have planned. Okay. Uh, Crimson Fleet Tactics. There is an old saying that to fight an enemy, one must know their enemy. The aphorism, while trite, still holds true today. Like many disorganized groups, the Crimson Fleet uses guerrilla tactics. They utilize the element of surprise to their advantage, grab jumping, and quickly striking their targets before fleeing the scene. These are not revelatory tactics. Throughout history, ambush, deception, sabotage, and espionage have been the tools smaller groups employ to outmaneuver larger naval forces. SysDef was formed in order to fight this foe in a non-traditional sense. It is up to the leadership to find creative ways to do that without sacrificing the principles we hold dear. Pirate operations. Uh, reports of pirate activity continue to plague the cell systems. While the mission board supplies with intel, the fleet often changes its targets to keep us guessing. According to Toss' report, there are three types of operations the fleet uses to fill its coffers. Pi one, piracy. Two, smuggling. Three, theft. They have honed these operations under their current leadership, and we would do well to study their tactics so that we can better protect the settled systems. How did transfer to system? Okay. I hear thieves are a real problem. What? You meant the fleet? No, I mean you. Commander says you've been talking too much, stealing all the oxygen on the vigilance, so they brought <laughs> me here to shut you up. You don't say. Well, good to have you back, partner. <laughs> good to be back. <sighs> I just want to explore the vigilance a little bit. I searched it, I looked around a little bit, and there was actually a locked door. That's like Kande's room, I suppose. Uh, right here.
wherever the Crimson Fleet. Oh, never mind. It was Locker. Yes, sir. Needed to clear some bad juju. I'm having some rotten luck in my last three missions. Well, you need to clear that through the proper channels. The last thing I need is Lieutenant Toft giving me an Alpha Centauri because he started a fire on this ship. Okay. Hello. Ah. Huh. I miss the son of Jemison. Once I get time off. I was thinking of trying to manipulate him into opening it for me, but. I don't think we can do that. Crap. So I suggest we be on our best behavior. She's named. Huh. Operations does good work. Oh, hello. I don't think we've met. Are you by chance new here? Yes. Time before we take them down. My name is Calvin. Nice to meet you. Wait, I know that name. You, you're that dangerous Terramorph Slayer everyone is talking about. Damn right I am. Well, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not scared of you. My godmother was a member of the Strikers Gang, and you're not even half as scary as her. <laughs> My name is Javanta. I'm an ensign with the maintenance and robotics team. And just between you and me, I don't think you're dangerous. <laughs> Do you? Actually, I'm a member of the Strikers myself. Are you really? Oh, what a coincidence! I, do you miss home at all? Oh, I need to go back the next time I get shore leave. Anyway, it was very nice to meet you. If you want to talk some more, I will be here. <laughs> uh, okay. Is there anything you want to know about me? Oh, I have so many questions. That is not enough time <laughs> to ask them all. But I won't ask about your vanguard duties, as I'm sure you're tired of people asking. Instead, I will ask you a very simple question. <clears throat> Are you a morning, afternoon, or night person? Uh... I'm a night person. Well, you see, I'm a night person, but I'm more productive in the mornings, I'd say. <laughs> so it doesn't work well for me. Night person. Oof, then we can't be friends. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Course, but I prefer the early hours myself. <laughs> uh, that's probably not unusual for a military vessel. Yes, but I like getting up before even the personnel. When I have the coffee maker all to myself. Jesus. But the thing I like Calm best down. is the quiet. When I can look <laughs> out into space and see the whole galaxy is asleep. When it's that quiet. The only noise you hear is from the vigilance itself. <laughs> she in fact, gives no we shits. keep each other company when the world is too busy snoring in their beds. It makes it so the mornings are just for us. What are your duties on the ship? Oh, I'm part of the maintenance team that makes sure the vigilance is operating smoothly. On the robotic side, I take care of the model A's on the ship and make sure they're treated with respect and dignity. They are people, after all. It's kind of like creepy, us. guys. <laughs> hey, Vasco deserves some respect. Agreed. We should treat our robots the same way we treat all living things. See? I knew there was something I liked about you. Machines are very dear to me. Skynet, Skynet, Skynet. How can we expect a robot to fight by our side if we won't fight for their right to exist? So I always do my best to treat them as my equals. <laughs> she disappeared. <sighs> Why did you join Sista? Huh. That's a good question. It was what you'd call a minor moral crisis. <laughs> I wasn't happy with my old job at Drone. I, I felt like my life was on an assembly line. Everything was about profit and nothing had any real meaning. But then it occurred to me if I'm so miserable, I could just leave. <laughs> so one day I just did. <laughs> Sistef is far from perfect, but our goal is noble. I can sleep soundly knowing my work will be for a cause that is just. See you soon. Okay, okay. that's to one of the ship. officers. Yeah, the way. Goes, I've got mob duty now on my birthday. Yeah, we can't control him. Commander Ikande is the heart and soul of UC Sysdef. Wait. I've... Like 
what? Darts? Hmm. What skeletons are you hiding in your locker? I'll go back in here. I mean, the others probably won't be able to, right? Excuse me. This character can't do that. Commander Ikande is the heart and soul of UC Sis Def. I'd follow him to the ends of the can't galaxy. Do that. Hmm. Okay. Let's go to his office at Mass to see if we can find a key there. If not, then I guess we just can't get into it. Uh... Brick. Can't fast travel. Jane, the United Colonies built such an impressive ship for battle, instead of using it for exploration. Back in base and tree. Come by to see the animals. Yes. <gasps> yes, the animals. The animals are here. Hey, buddy. You are. I was wondering when you'd visit. Should give us a little time to catch up. I'm surprised you're taking this so well. Well, of course. What choice do I have? Thanks to my own stupidity, my second chance to return to the Crimson Fleet is long gone. And by the time I get out of prison, any hopes I had to return to that life will have fully disappeared. Uh, hmm. I don't mind. I didn't mind this guy. <laughs> You'll certainly have a lot of time to think about your mistakes. That's not how I expect to spend the next couple of decades. But it is what it is. Well, anyway, glad you popped by to say hello. Now, if you wouldn't mind letting an old man get his rest, I'd appreciate it. I did you a favor putting you here because Sistef's taking down the Crimson Fleet. So you're saying I should be happy that you took me out of the line of fire? I have to confess, I never thought of it that way. Last thing I intended to do with my life was go out in a blaze of glory on Nave or Delgado's <laughs> behalf. But at the same time, my freedom's gone, so I'm not exactly popping the cap off the vodka bottle and celebrating either. Fair enough. I assume Trident is pressing charges? Oh yes, quite aggressively. <laughs> The legal team will very likely grind me into the dirt. There isn't much I can do about it. The amusing thing is, I don't even think they care very much that the heist went down on their ship. That's a given risk for them. I think they're more embarrassed I was able to gain the position as captain of the Siren under false pretenses in the first place. Mind if I ask you about your arrest? After getting set up on the key, I traveled to a few settlements to find a base of operations. I was looking for a place that would allow me to pick up information about juicy shipments for the fleet to jump on. When I stopped at Gagarin, Sisdef was on the ground ah. waiting for me instead of that contact I was expecting to meet. Your friend Toft really pulled the wool over my eyes. You really pulled a number on me, Agent. Well done. Yeah, this guy's alright. <laughs> I don't mind him. <laughs> this guy was the one that was running away. Who else? There's only three so far. 
salutations. I assume you're here to commemorate my terrible misfortune? Yes. I assume you mean the fact that you, you incriminate yourself with audio recording? Ah, yes, the infamous evidence that you procured. Bravo, detective. Allow me to congratulate you on your sleuthing skills. That recording was quite a find. I must admit that I was short-sighted when it came to Ms. Swift's ingenuity. I shall not make that same mistake twice. I'm glad you find this amusing. Oh, amused isn't the verbiage I'd choose to describe my frame of mind, but I'll acknowledge the observation. Well, as much as I detest being the bearer of bad news, I have to disclose that you're wasting your time. You see, this imprisonment is merely an insignificant hindrance. I don't foresee being incarcerated in perpetuity. In fact, I would wager that my legal team will have my release expedited within the month. Not if I mess with your legal team. <laughs> How's your legal team probably going to get you out of this mess? Uh, I only had the time to explain the wondrous loopholes of the UC's justice system. Do you honestly think that I'd embark on an endeavor with Miss Swist? And Mr. Vera, without a legal exit strategy at my disposal, I can assure you, I won't be imprisoned aboard the Vigilance for an inordinately extended period of time. It was still worth knocking you off your pedestal. Well then, allow me to reinforce your sensation of schadenfreude. Due to your actions, my tenure with Galbank has been terminated and several million credits in fines are being levied against me. The day is yours, Agent. I hate this guy. <laughs> He's so annoying. I appreciate the compliment. You're quite welcome. Well enough idle banter. I've taken up more than my share of your valuable time. Honestly, this interaction has been quite pleasurable. Do feel free to stop by and gloat at any time. Good day. Oh, I will. Perhaps you could provide me some space so I might be alone with Damn my it. thoughts. Thank you. Uh, that's it? I guess the other people haven't arrived yet. <laughs> Gotta catch them all, prisoners! Okay, uh... Yes. Keep away Kande and Jillian Toff's office. Anything in here? Uh, that would be a no. Huh. So I guess the only way that we can go into that locker is if we side with the Crimson Fleet and kill him. Unless there's something I'm missing, but hey. huh. Okay, yeah. So I guess I will end the video here um, since we can't really unlock his locker. Uh, so thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye. Okay, so I'm doing this after editing. Um, I'm probably not going to side with the Crimson Fleet, so I realized I should just try to figure out what is behind that locker anyways. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our gun out. We are going to go to Settings, Gameplay Options, and Reduce Enemy Combat Damage, and Player Combat Damage to all. Very easy. And we're going to do this. Sis Steph is now your enemy. We 
we don't want to take down Ikande. That's Ikande. Kind of stuck here. Okay. Uh, apparently, I ran up healing, <laughs> which is not good. Emergency kit, and then we'll put that in zero. Don't hit the Kande. Oh, we still can't manipulate him. Damn it. Still not gonna work? Oh god. Okay. I guess we really do have to side with uh, Crimson Fleet to open this stupid locker. Huh. Well, that was pointless. <laughs> Whoa. I turned this into a horror game. Holy shit. So I tried it a couple more times and it seems like uh, the lighting, it's just this room that does that. Like when you go into photo mode, it messes up with the lighting. Okay, plan B. Uh, I redid all that, but this time I emptied one of our ship slots. Let's see if we can take this. Okay, can we take it out? Damn it! 